Uh, today, we have the opportunity to present diplomas to the graduates from the following courses. WSQ Diploma in Media, Content Production and Management, Assistant Director. Woo! WSQ Diploma in Media, Content Production and Management, Script Writer. Woo! WSQ Specialist Diploma in Media, Content Production and Management, Producer. Woo! WSQ Diploma in Media Post Production, Sound Editor, Sound Engineer. Yeah. Specialist Diploma in Social Media Marketing and Online Content Creation. Yeah. And we have the Diploma in Acting Chinese. Yeah. We are also joined by very distinguished guests, starting, of course, from Media Corp, Ms. Jamie Ang, Board of Directors, Singapore Media Academy, and our Chief Financial Officer. <laughs> also in attendance is Ms. Angeline Poe, Board of Directors, Singapore Media Academy, and Chief Customer and Corporate Development Officer. <laughs> and we have Ms. Doreen Neo, Board of Directors, Singapore Media Academy, and Chief Talent Officer. From Skills Future Singapore, we have Ms. Shannon Neo, Deputy Director, Industry Development, Division 2. <laughs> also from Skills Future Singapore, Ms. Nadia Rosley, Assistant Director, Industry Development, Division 2. <laughs> and Manager, Industry Development, Division 2, Mr. Niraj Vimal, son of Haridasan. joining us this evening as well. Now, I've had the privilege of working with them when I was a DJ and we used to MC for their show, uh, for their uh, run. It is a great, great cause. Yellow Ribbon Singapore, who's represented by their Deputy Director, Reintegration Group, Mr. Leslie Jin. And also from Yellow Ribbon Singapore, its Manager, Reintegration Group, Mr. Jason Chu. Thank you, Maggie. A uh, very warm welcome, all graduates, family, friends, and last but not least, our trainers. Thank you for taking time to attend this very special occasion. <laughs> this cohort, the class of 2023, is a very special cohort. Why do I say that? Because your graduation ceremony is in a very sacred place. Doreen is laughing, right? It is in a very special place. This is uh, the very same space many actors, actresses have died, cried, have laughed, have gotten divorced, have died and come back again. It could have been a hospital. It has a tree that can produce money. It can be a HDB flat. It can be a corridor. It can be a bungalow. It can be even a jail cell or an office. You are in a place where media magic happens. And I think that that is very special, especially for the graduates of SMA. <clears throat> now, I'd like to congratulate you on your achievements. And I also like to rewind and bring you back to the first day of your class when you had to rush. For some of you, rush after work, grab dinner on the way, try and come by 7 o'clock, maybe still having your dinner and trying to attend class twice a week, three hours, sometimes weekends when we like to torture you and take away your Saturday. Right. Many of you might have thought, why? When am I here for? Why do I? Where is my social life? Some of you might have wondered, am I the only one who thinks that my trainer is talking Greek? I don't understand. Others might say, why is the call sheet so difficult to input and update? Why must call sheets be so difficult? Producing might say, why is it that I need to know what the contract clauses are when I hire professionals in media? Script writers will say, why is my script writing teacher asking me to shorten my dialogue? Less is more, less is more. Why can't the two people just talk and tell the whole story? Right. Some of you might have disagreements with your course mates. 
I hear some of them. I don't hear some of them. I try and not hear some of them, right? Some of you are, you know, struggled to understand. But at the end of the day, I'd like to say congratulations, you've made it. What you now have is a set of skills that will allow you to grow as a media professional. What you now have is a set of skills that will allow you to provide better for your loved ones. What you now have is a set of skills that you really can be more competitive in. All right? So I'd like to congratulate you on that. Before I go, I'd like to just quickly say this is the beginning for you. Media is a craft that you have to hone. And the reason why we call it a craft is because you have to keep going at it. If you think that you have a diploma and you can sleep and rest on your laurels, then I think the segment later on will prove you wrong. All right? So I hope that you will allow your determination to propel you to success. I hope that the newly acquired skills will bring you will bring you to a better place in a career that you are passionate about. I hope that your imagination and creativity will fuel and award you with success. Congratulations, the class of 2023. Hi everybody, congratulations. Well done on completing your diploma. It must have been quite an adventure. Um, I'm sure that you experienced and learned many things inside and outside the classroom. Um, and I hope that you continue to learn and grow as artists and performers. And I'm sure I'll see some or all of you in the scene. Um, you know, whether you are performing, creating, backstage as audience all of these things are really important and i hope that you uh, continue to pursue your interest in in this field um and i hope that uh, you'll really enjoy this day and take the time to reflect on all the things that you went through and take the time to really enjoy the fact that you've gone through something really meaningful and important in your lives hello everyone and congrats on your graduation so you're the very first batch that I've ever taught at SMA. So I always have very fond memories of you. And by now, after going through your six modules, I'm sure you, you would have discovered your strengths. So continue working on those and honing your skills as we embark on your next step in this exciting journey of the media industry. Hi SMA and congratulations to another batch of students graduating. Um, the beauty of SMA courses is that uh, you cut across all aspects of media, performance, production, social media marketing, etc. So I guess all of you are now part of the media value chain. Congratulations. Uh, three ideas to share with you today. Uh, number one, very quickly, uh, please network. I encourage everybody here to actively network and cultivate relationships to grow mutual understanding and appreciation of your work. Um, be the first one to introduce yourself. Uh, Singaporeans are actually very shy, even the big stars. Uh, secondly, I think uh, it is also very important to educate your clients. And if you have, uh, if you are becoming a client yourself, uh, now I guess you'll understand that planning skills and crafts in media is not that easy. Um, so hopefully, you know, you'll understand and learn. Uh, especially for those of you who are producers, uh, as always saying, producing is common sense, but sense is not very common. Last but not least, inspire others and pass on the quality values of a willingness to learn and also due diligence. Uh, we are always talking about AI, data, you know, whether or not it's good, but I think in many parts of media storytelling, uh, you as a human being, and you as a human interface will actually count and mean more. So yeah, that's about it. Congratulations. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. 同学们好,首先恭喜你们毕业了。我很高兴能够在演员训练班里头认识你们。原来我们都对戏剧有兴趣。我们都对表演有兴趣。更重要的是,原来我们都要不断地提升自己。
，装备自己，让自己更好的表演、表达、表述、表现自己。我想，课堂里所有老师跟你们的分享，嗯、呃，也许你不打算当个演员，不过在很多地方都会让你使得上力，让你有所得到的。所以，让我们在。不断的提升自己的这条道路上，共同勉励。Hi, I'm Adrian here, your instructor for SMM OCC. Congratulations! I hope、uh, you have enjoyed the course, and、uh, your passion in digital marketing、uh, has grown.、Uh, maybe even consider a career in digital marketing. At the very least, I hope、uh, you are now in a better position to even select a partner to help you in your future endeavors, lah.、Uh, so all the very best. Hi, class of two to three. Today is your graduation, which only means for each and every one of you, the journey has just started. Now I hope to see all of you in the Singapore media industry. Whichever roles you play, give your all out. As my mentor has taught me, your best work is your last work. So stay competitive,、uh, and always know that Singapore Media Academy and the trainers have your back. Congratulations. Acting class 的同学们，大家好，要演好戏，就要先做好人。先做好一个人。如果你看不见别人的痛苦，是因为慈悲不够；如果你看不清自己的痛苦，是因为智慧不够。想要增加智慧的话，得先增加你的慈悲。那怎么增加慈悲呢？多关注这个世界如何在运作。恐怖主义、中美关系、中东问题、气候变迁、世界战争等等。当你能关心的体会天下人所碰到的困难的时候，你的慈悲和智慧就会增加，到时什么角色都难不倒你。再接再厉，再努力。Hey guys, congratulations! See, not so hard, right? Well done, everybody. Now the next thing to do is put it to good use. So all the best again, and I really hope to catch up with you guys one of these days. Take care. Well done, guys. You guys made it. Uh. I wish you all the best on your future endeavors, and I hope to see you outside on the job. Hey, cheers! Hello, 学员老师在这边，在我的工作室跟大家问个好，恭喜大家终于毕业了。经过那么多月的努力的学习，我希望大家每个人各有所收获。无论呢，接下来你是不是走上演艺这条道路，我相信在新传媒学院学到的这些内容，必将在你的不管是生活还是从你的事业上，一定能有所帮助。那希望你们之间结下的友谊也能够一直延续下去，也很期。期待再次跟大家团圆哦，加油哦！Hi graduates! Congratulations for completing your specialist diploma. I will see all of you around in the industry. Take care for now. Congratulations! This is Chingshen from the storyboarding module, and a big congrats to the scriptwriters whom I've taught、uh, last year. 
I think you guys were an amazing bunch. I learned a lot from you as much as you learned from the module. So I do hope you can continue writing your dreams, uh, continue putting your imagination and voice out to the world. Don't stop uh, writing. So all the best to your future endeavors. Hi 希望我們會再合作。咁喺度祝你哋畢業成功。開心。多謝各位。Hi everyone, congratulations on your graduation. I'm so proud of you. It worked hard, so please pat yourselves on your back. I hope you have enjoyed the journey and thank you for making it fun for me too. All the best to your future. Do keep in touch. If you join the industry, let us know what you're doing. All the best. Once again, congrats. Hi, congratulations for accomplishing your diploma journey. Now that the inciting incident is in place, it is time for you to take action. There will be crises, there will be obstacles, but I'm sure you will push on until you achieve your goal. Have fun and enjoy the journey. Congratulations to all SME students on your graduation. Now go out and make this world a better place. We're very proud of your accomplishments and may all your dreams and aspirations come true. 各位新传媒学院的学生大家好,我是Nick Hello graduates of the SMOCC program. Congratulations, today marks a fantastic day in your journey as a content creator. So I'm personally very happy to see that uh, all your hard work, dedication and passion for the art of creating online content has uh, paid off. It's a fantastic day indeed. So I, I like to think that throughout this program, you have embarked on a very, very um, uh, engaging as well as transformative learning experience with the different mediums, honing your skills. And uh, most importantly, I think um, you've developed the, the power of storytelling, which you'll find uh, can go a very long way indeed towards um, um, whatever purpose you want, whether it's a branding, whether it's a entertainment, or just for the sake of uh, telling a story. So I personally uh, very happy to see your commitment to uh, learning in this very, very trying times um, has paid off in bucket loads. So uh, during the time as um, students, I saw that you have acquired uh, technical expertise and also, most importantly, uh, develop your own unique voice and style in terms of uh, creating the content. So, I, I just want you all to uh, know that it's more important to be the masters of the media and be able to flip the script whenever you want to rather than to just you know blindly uh, follow the herd so as you embark on the next chapter of your life's journey i hope you all remember the impact of your work uh, can actually go far beyond uh, online your words images and your videos have the power to educate entertain and inspire people so it's a fantastic opportunity as well as a great responsibility. So once again, uh, congratulations. I'm really happy for you all. Enjoy your achievements and uh, all the best to you. Congratulations in completing the course. I know that it hasn't been easy for everybody given the time constraints. Um, for some of you, uh, the road ahead to join the media workforce may be a little daunting. 
but I believe that with the skills and uh, the knowledge that you picked up during the course, if you apply them, you should be able to navigate through the challenges. I hope the course has been enriching for all of you and I wish you all the best in whatever, ch whatever path that you choose. Hi guys! Congratulations on your well-deserved success! Very happy to share in the excitement of your graduation day! I'm very proud of all of you! Well, best wishes for your next adventure! See you guys! Put your hands together and welcome Timothy Tan! Back up on stage, Timothy is going to be moderating a panel discussion on the future developments of the media industry and he is going to be joined on stage uh, by some others. Please put your hands together and welcome on stage Ms. Angeline Poe, as well as Azha, our veteran social media marketing trainer and strategist. Right. Traditionally, we always have a commencement speaker. So this year, I thought we shake things up a little bit since the venue is a little special, right? So very happy to have uh, quite a, distinct, a very distinguished panel to talk about the future of the media industry and also employment possibilities of the media industry. So my question, politically incorrect, right? Is media called a dinosaur? TV and radio who watch? What is MediaCorp doing to stay competitive amidst this this whole this whole town that is filled by Netflix, Korean drama, Japanese drama? What's what's MediaCorp doing? Are we a dinosaur? Well, if you think about how long we've been in business, how when was the first broadcast uh, in Singapore? That dates back to nineteen thirty six. Not quite dinosaur lah, but maybe. Elephant? I don't know how... Some sweet <laughs> what, <laughs> what animal is that long? Um, yeah, so, you know, we are that old, if you think about the first radio broadcast, right? So radio is really... If we think about broadcast and not the print medium, right? Um, radio was the first mass medium in Singapore. Then came along TV. And, you know, for, for many decades... Uh, we we call those the good old days, right? When, the good old days. <laughs> when, when, you know, whatever we put out... People would lap it up. People would consume because there was not much alternative. Then came cable TV. Still okay. Like, I mean, local local content was still uh, preferred, right? Even though there was a lot of international choice. Then when the internet happened, it was still okay until broadband and then mobile devices. And then, you know, and then we know now, you know, the current situation. So life has gotten a lot more complex for us in the media sector. So if you ask me, are we old? Yes, if you think about when we started broadcasting. But if you think about what we're doing today, I would say we are, I mean, quite contemporary and cutting edge because we don't think of ourselves as a broadcaster. We think of ourselves as a national media network, right? Um, what, what do I mean by that? So as a broadcaster, you just think about your platform, you think about your channels, your radio stations. But as a media network, what we're doing now is we're putting the customer at the heart of what we do. Everything that we do, we think about you first. How are you consuming content? On what device? At what time in the day? What are you doing when you're consuming content? So I'll give you a very, uh, you know, um, make this practical for you. Imagine CNA. We changed the name from Channel News Asia to CNA. Wow. <laughs> you know, big change. No, actually, it's, uh, there is significance to it because we wanted to drop the word channel. It's no longer a channel, or it's no longer just a channel. If you think about your consumption of CNA, how many of you watch the channel, the actual channel? How many of you read an article? Yeah, a lot more, right? How many of you listen to CNA 938? How many of you watch it on YouTube, like a CNA Insider video? You see, everyone has a different experience with CNA. And that's what we're talking about because each of you has a very different and unique content consumption habit. So imagine the CNA journalist, right? In the past, you know, uh, there's an opening ceremony of a new factory or whatever, right? And then we send a journalist and then they come back and maybe, you know, out with him or her would be a cameraman and a sound man. I used to intern in the newsroom, so that was what, how it was when I was an intern. And then we come back, we package the story, and then it goes out onto the 9pm news or whatever, right? Or the next morning's news. Today, 
once they are there on the spot, they do the interview, you know, and then you see actually, you know what you see in the video, uh, you see the person with the mic collar that says CNA, then aid, then Berita, then whatever, right? It's one person. It's just that he's holding four mics, right? And then he comes back, he writes the article. We sometimes use AI to do some translation where it's possible or do the transcription and we do the translation into other languages. And then it feeds into the different news bulletins. But also sometimes before the news bulletins, the digital article has to come out first. Because today you don't wait until the news bulletin for news, right? I mean, digital and social media is how you get the news. So imagine how the work, how the job of a journalist, just one role, in the entire media corp has changed so much over the decades just because of this shift in how us as consumers is, uh, you know, today we're consuming content in such a different way. Quick follow-up question, right? And it's something that even my parents, when I joined the media industry, told me, if you join the media industry, you're going to starve to death. You're not going to have stable pay, right? My trainers are shaking their heads because they're living quite a good life. But what's your comment on this? I don't think we're starving to death. La. <laughs> I mean, we, we're not the best paying profession in the industry, but neither are we starving. But right? what about work volume, right? And, and I'm going to poll the audience. How many of you binge watch dramas? Hands up. Yeah, almost 70%. I think Doreen here can tell you she was once upon a time you know, in production, that it is so difficult and time-consuming for us to make a one episode. But you watch it in a breath or you watch it when you're eating ham chim peng and then that's it, two episodes are gone. <laughs> so, the fact of the matter is that would you agree, we are, produ we are consuming faster than we are producing. So therefore, it means that there's a lot of work to be done. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, a drama can take anywhere from nine months, which is very short, huh? two years, really like many, many years to complete. Um, the, the really, the ones that take a lot of effort in the research and the writing and the casting and the effects take like three years, five years easily, right? So, and then <laughs> there we launch it and then in one month it's gone. Uh, that, that is the reality. Um, and, and that's what we have to contend with, which also means that actually we have to rethink our strategy in terms of where the content goes. Does it just go on free to air, Channel 5, Channel 8, Surya Vasantam? Uh, does it also just only go on MeWatch? What about YouTube? We now actually put all of our content on YouTube. It's not competition. It's not cannibalizing eyeballs. It's actually part of, because again, right, how do you consume content? You're consuming on YouTube? Okay, we put it on YouTube, right? Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay, before I go to Lelio, <coughs> which is the first broadcast in Singapore. I just want to put it out there, okay? Uh, Singaporeans ought to be proud of our documentaries. CNA documentaries are world-class. All right? Please, you know. All right, okay. Lelio. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in 1930s, Radio. you were still... I, I, I was still a concept in somebody's mind. I was a concept. <laughs> your, problem, your parents haven't met yet. No, no, no. <laughs> Not at no, all. But your journey from behind the mic to in front of... To, behind the mic to being a, a program director, how has the journey been like and how do you see the younger radio DJs? In the past, you just had to have a voice. Yes. Now you need to know acrobatics and whatnot, <laughs> right? To be a DJ. Yeah, you should be able to do the taxes all at the same time. Um, so yes, truly, uh, the world of radio, actually we don't even call it radio anymore. We call it audio. Um, and much like how... Channel News Asia changed their name from Channel News Asia to CNA. For our audio platforms, we dropped all the FMs because nobody listens on the traditional radio anymore. Um, they listen on all sorts of devices. Uh, so the world of audio really has changed from the time uh, when I was a DJ. And it was really, I mean, the, the common joke was like, yes, all radio DJs at that time, we had the face for radio because you just heard our voice and that's it. Um, I don't know whether many of us would still be able to exist uh, if, let's say, they really saw our faces. I know my program would have tanked straight away. <laughs> but um, the world of audio has really changed because now it's also about visual audio. So it's not uncommon to see all of our radio DJs from 987, uh, Class 95, even Gold, Oli, all the channels. Uh, they actually are now seen as well. Yep. 
yeah. So there's a visual aspect uh, of audio nowadays, and that's the way forward. All right. Just a quick follow-up question. Yep. Your entry into radio was quite accidental. Right? Very. I know this is your history, but <laughs> how have you how have, have you struggled to to remain competitive? How do you remain competitive as a, a media professional? Um, okay, so it really, really, the journey is not one that you just sit and because you are familiar with doing programming. Um, I've had to very quickly as well pivot and learn all about social media. Um, you know, I still struggle sometimes about understanding algorithms because when we think like, all right, I got the algorithm down pat, alamak, they go and change it. Okay, have to study it all over again. So it's always staying on top of the competition, knowing what um, others are doing, uh, what are the new platforms uh, that are coming up, the new communication platforms. So, you know, TikTok um, is really one of the big platforms that a lot of your youths are on. So very quickly, we are also learning how to exist on TikTok. How to produce videos, how to produce shows which can translate both into an audio piece as well as a visual piece. That actually is one of the greatest challenges. Okay, all right. Now, this gentleman here, Azar, uh, some of you might know him, but he is a direct marketeer from day one. Unlike me, I was a spray and pray marketeer, right? So, uh, he is someone who is a founder of his own company, Raw Onion Decisions. He's worked with Microsoft and IBM on organizational transformation, data analytics, data-driven marketing, and a whole lot of even legislation in terms of data protection. Right? So, I'd like to ask you, because you look like you belong to the age group where you're very familiar with spray and pray marketing, but you are a direct marketeer. So how has the industry changed? And what have you seen so far in terms of people surviving, people succeeding? What had they have to do? Okay, so long story. My background is even weirder than what he said. So I'm technically, a, I'm a data architect. I started off as a very technical person. I design data. And then, so somewhere along the way, so there is a technical aspect to that work. Basically, you, de you design data so that the IT guys can build a system to collect the data. At some point, I figured out that actually, data tells stories. So now, besides building the data to just facilitate IT collection, you figured out the way the data is designed will determine the stories that you can tell. And I use the term stories here very broadly to include Decisions that needs to be made, uh, pitches that needs to be made. If you need to sell, convince, get stuff done. At the end of the day, let's their stories. There's a, there's a business outcome, and so that's how I sort of got into marketing. That this the technical guy who designed the data, and then basically realized that shit, nobody else knows how to do this. So this becomes an interesting transition for the tech guy to go into business and create his own world to say, let me show you what data can do. So I became a marketer. So if you're old enough to know what direct marketing is, this is marketing with the use of data. Today we have fancy words, CRM, but those days, so I, I literally come from the publishing industry. So I send six million pieces of direct mail a year all around the world. It costs money. Eh? This is not free. Eh? This is not you send EDM. There's money to every piece of paper, envelope, stamp that goes to the mailbox. Eh? So it means you, you have to be very, very specific in terms of, you know, do I, do I need to send this extra piece? Do I need to have this extra color? Because color means weight, weight means money. So that's how I got into, into so-called direct marketing. The fundamentals hasn't changed. Eh? So today, if you look at the, the, the landscape, the, 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 the things that need to be done hasn't changed. The platforms has changed. The media has changed, so I stopped doing direct mail. So now I don't pay sing tell anymore. <laughs> or I, I don't post. I don't pay sing post anymore. Instead, I pay sing tell. I, pay, I, I I'm buying different sort of traffic, but the objective is still there. The disciplines have not changed. So I think the the problem or the challenge so as an industry player, the challenge I see is not the old people from the old world transitioning into the new world because you come with the fundamentals. I think. People who start with the internet age forget that this is not new. <laughs> and this is an acquired skill that has been honed in, yep. perfected almost down to a science. 
And so if you shortcut and say, but the email is free, no, it's not free. You pay in another way. You pay through uh, attention span. You pay through trustworthiness. People don't trust you anymore, which means no more eyeballs. Uh, people just write you off. People, it goes into the junk mail and never recover again. So I think that's the change uh, in, in that sense. But if you come from the old world, um, none of the fundamentals have changed. You just need to adapt. The other thing I also need to say that none of the old media is irrelevant. Uh. They are as effective as it is today, depending on context. That means audience, purpose, action required. Different channels work for different purposes. It could be the same person in a different part of his life. He will trust one channel and not the other. And then in a different purpose for the same product, he switches. So I think when people say things like, so for someone who's teaching digital marketing, this becomes, I'm, this is career limiting. I say, there's no such thing as digital marketing. There's only marketing. Digital is just another channel because when you say digital marketing, which means you say, I don't do outdoor, I don't do analog. But people are still making money and people are still spending. So I think you just need to say there is marketing and then there's all these channels and there will be new channels coming up. So you just need to figure out its place. So I think that's, that's the way I would look at it. All right. Can I just jump on Azaz's point? Yes, it, it's true. Marketing is, it's just marketing, right? And uh, I like to give this example. Sometimes I give talks at industry events and all that. And people always wonder, is it still relevant to run ads on MediaCorp, right? But after they understand, you know, MediaCorp is not just, again, our broadcast platforms. It's also digital, social. Um, <clears throat> and then we have performance marketing, which means we only earn based on success. If the clients succeed in selling something, then we get paid. So we had one partnership with a fast food uh, chain. Okay, and then they were, they were selling a particular new range of their food product. And so we ran the ads across our network, radio, TV, digital, CNA, YouTube, Facebook, everything, right? And then halfway through, suddenly the client called and said, stop the campaign. And we're like, oh, what happened? Did we do something wrong? They said, no, no, no. We ran out of cheese. <laughs> so we sold so much of that one product that they were promoting, it surpassed their expectation of how much they could sell. So they said, you wait, huh? We let us indent more cheese and then we can continue. <laughs> so if you see the sales chart, it goes da 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 that broke. <laughs> and then, you know, and then there'll be this annotation that says OOC, which means out of cheese. Mm. <laughs> okay. So you know, it's just marketing. It's not digital or analog or anything. I, I just wanna since I have Angelina's attention, I just wanna ask on behalf of I'm sure all of you are curious. What to you, what are some of the most critical uh, what are some of the most critical characteristics? So what, what factors do you need to have to succeed in media? Um, I think it helps if you love your job. <laughs> Any job, it helps if you love your job. You know, then because there will always be good days and there will always be bad days regardless, right? Uh, so loving your job makes, the, makes getting past the bad days a little bit easier. Um, and then I think, um, and this is just going to sound very generic, I think you have to have tenacity. You have to be always uh, willing to and, and wanting to learn and um, challenge yourself um, because, I, I, I mean, I can't speak for other industries, but media is changing so rapidly, really. We, when we think, like Maggie was saying, we think we figured it out and then the next thing we know, hey, it's changed again. You know, we think that we have, you know, uh, set a, a certain workflow or whatever, and it works now, and then we're like, oh no, it does, you know, the market just changed again, we have to review. So, you know, always constantly challenging yourself, not falling into that complacency to think that things are working and you don't need to adapt. So you need to stay alert and nimble and don't let yourself be too comfortable. All right. Um, Maggie? What would you look for in a media professional, an aspiring media professional? Uh, I, I would have to say that uh, somebody who has very thick skin. You would not imagine how thick my skin has grown over the years. Uh, you just need to have thick skin because not always, I mean, things are not always going to go your way. So you need to learn how to bang and run into doors, survive it, and then find a way around it. So tenacity as well. And always, I think, um, the person who has a childlike innocence and is always willing to explore 
will be the one that will be able to survive this ever-changing, uh, you know, landscape that we call media. All right. I'm just going to close today's session with something that I'm sure all of my uh, trainers will tell you. In the media industry, you need passion. If you're not passionate in the media industry, you cannot survive in the media industry. Right. So I think with that, I'd like to close the session. Thank you, Aza. Thank you, Maggie. Thank and you. Thank you, Angeline. All right. Thank, thank you. were able to apply the acquired skills in scripting, acting, directing, and editing in this short film. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy. <laughs> Woo! Look at her, girl. You think so? Ramona. Don't you think this is a bit too... Don't listen to her, Mona. She never had a day of fun in her life. That's so not true. Also, not the point. I like this one. It's nice. Oh, come on! That's so boring. This is all your fault. Are you girls ready? Yeah, a little bit, never mind. Lah. Take a nice one. Lah. Oh, Ramona! Slow down! Huh? I'll be late. Wait a while, la. you hold on, you went straight. Girl, la. you're not getting any younger, you know. Must take care of your parents more. Do, do I look okay? <laughs> I think you look great, Ramona. I don't know. Should have gone to dress law. Arthur, any man would be lucky to have you. Beautiful, smart. Be more confident in yourself, ma. Then what about my hair? Should I tie it up? Yes, yes tie, tie it, it up. up. Ooh, jinx. I'll grow up. All right, here we go. Hi, Ramana. How's today? Good, I think. You want to come closer? I can hear you very well. Is something wrong? <laughs> oh, no, nothing. Our last session today. How are you feeling? Tell him you got the feels for him. Oh, good. I hope these sessions have been very helpful for you, Ramona. Yeah, it's nice being here, talking to you. 
How has your grieving process been so far? I miss them. You wonder what they would say if they could see me now. I'm sure they'll tell you how proud they are of you and all you've accomplished. Thank you. I hope so. Are you still hearing any voices? No. Not really. I mean, I guess they are a part of me. They are like me, yet different from me. Does that make sense? Anything else you'd like to share? Then I think our time here is done. Let me show you the way out. Bye. 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 Yeah. You too. What? It's not my quality. If the doctor did something, you must ignore it. Suppose I do my Just do that. Don't make that hurry, man. Oh. Who does that man think he is? The lowball offers an insult. Calm down. We go is negotiate. Yes, yes, let's negotiate. Can you say something? No. 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 You sure? It's best to have another offer on hand first. Yes, yes. Let's get another offer. Still waiting for a few to get back to me. Mm, maybe. We could try to do both. Yeah, good idea. To earlier. Hmm. It's a long story. I've got time. A big round of applause. So you just uh, watched uh, a short film called Where Ramona Met Julian, which tells the story about this woman as she heads out to apparently meet a man um, of her dreams or not, but her entourage of four well-meaning but very colorful characters insist on tagging along until she meets the right one. But the question is, this entourage of personalities, are these spirits? Are they versions of split personalities or are they just imaginary friends? Now, through the film, the project team hope to explore the aspects of a topic actually that has really come into the forefront, mental health as well as its stigma, and that as people say, it is okay not to be okay. So this short film illustrates all of the skills and the knowledge that our students have acquired through the course of the diploma. And this, ladies and gentlemen, friends, is the hard work of all the graduates who deserve another round of applause.